Welcome. Let's discuss the inverse of the sine and cosine function. Let's remind ourselves what is the sine function. As an input, we have an angle. And as an output, we have the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. The inverse function does the opposite. The input, it is the ratio. And the output, it is the angle. And the notation that we have for sine inverse is sine with a little negative one on top of it. So you can think of the inverse of sine as a function where you can plug in the ratio and it will tell you what's the angle that they come from. Now let's concentrate on the function of cosine. As an input, we have an angle. And when we plug that angle into the sine function, the output is the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. Now the inverse, it is a function where we can plug in the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse, and then it can tell us what's the angle that they come from. And to indicate this is the inverse function, we're going to put a little one on top of cosine. And inside, the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. We can think of the inverse of cosine as a function where we plug in the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse, and it will tell you what's the angle that it comes from. And the application for inverse function is always to find the value of some angle. Let's apply this idea in the following examples. Given the following triangles, we want to find out the value of the indicated angle. And because we're looking for angles, we can think of inverse functions. In example A, let's start by looking at our reference angle, which we can find it here. And based on this angle, let's label our triangle. The side of opposite of 90 degrees, that's our hypotenuse. The side opposite of a reference angle, that's the opposite side. And the side next to the angle, that's our adjacent. And based on this labeling, we can see that we only have information about the opposite and about the hypotenuse. But now that we have this information, we can identify what's the function that we need to use. In this case, it's going to be the sine function. Because remember, that is defined as opposite over hypotenuse which is the values that we have. If we find the sine of our reference angle x, that is equivalent to the opposite, which is 11, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 27. Well, let's visualize what this means. This means that if we have an angle of x, and we plug in to the function of sine, we obtain 11 over 27. So to find the angle of x back, let's use the inverse function, which we can rewrite as x equals the inverse evaluated at the ratio, 11 over 27. And this is an expression that we can use our graphing calculator to find the value of. Let's get our calculator. First, let's make sure that our calculator is in degree mode. So let's press mode. Notice that it's on the degree, so we can continue. To find the button for the inverse of sine, we can find it on top of the sine button in blue. To access that option, we're going to press second and then sign. So notice that in our calculator, we have a little negative one on top of it. Now we know we're okay. Let's plug in our ratio, 11 over 27. And now we have our angle, 24.04 degrees. Let's take a look at example B now. Let's identify the angle that we're looking for, which is x. Let's label our triangle based on this angle. Let's identify the information that we have. We have information about the adjacent, and we have information about the hypotenuse. And now that we have identified what's the information that we have, we can conclude that we want to use the cosine function, because cosine has been defined as adjacent over hypotenuse which is the information that we have. So let's set this up. If we evaluate the function of cosine by angle x, 
we're going to get the ratio of the adjacent over hypotenuse, which in this case, that will be 13 over 20. Let's visualize this result. If we get angle X and we plug it in to our cosine function, we're going to get 13 over 20. If we apply our inverse of cosine, we should be getting our angle back. So now we can say that X is equal to the inverse of cosine evaluated by the ratio 13 over 20. Let's find this value using our calculator. To access the inverse of cosine, that's here in blue on top of the cosine button. So let's press second cosine. Notice there's a little negative one on top of it, so we know we're okay. Now let's plug in our ratio, 13 over 20. And now we have our angle. Our angle is approximately of 49.46 degrees. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.